Hello guys and welcome to Switch You Play and welcome to episode 7 of this wonderful football podcast. Today I'm Josh obviously, I'm joined by one person today, one special guest and it's Tom. Hello. Sadly it's only us two but I guess they picked the best two really. Uh, Colm and Michael are on holiday so it's down to us really to, to record this um, this podcast really which is, it'll be fun, like I'm the leader now of this podcast for this yeah and you're, you're being treated to a, a southerner special a southerner special yeah certainly and in this episode like we do most weeks really we go talk about the transfers a bit of rumours and some hot topics <laughs> Michael came up with that so don't blame us for that <laughs> <laughs> that laugh is awful anyway on to the English transfers and let's start off Premier League let's go uh, you know just start off at the top and then just make your way down Middlesbrough will be pretty low um, anyway <laughs> okay where should we start Tom what do you uh, wanna... should we start on turning up on the all the confirmed transfers right, in England you, you can uh, do this. Premier League you can do this um, we've had uh, in the Premier League these are confirmed transfers uh, including loans we've had uh, Carl Jenkinson from Arsenal to West Ham that was a loan um, Neom uh, or Nyom from Udinese to Watford uh, on an undisclosed fee uh, Geordie Classy from Feyenoord to Southampton uh, in, for a fee of in the region of 8 million uh, uh, Lenz from Dynamo Kiev to Sunderland for 8 million uh, Uriachi uh, from Barcelona to Stoke for an undisclosed fee. Yus Cavall from uh, Tottenham to Sunderland for an undisclosed fee. Uh, Fabian Dell from Aston Villa to Man City for eight million. Uh, Jordan Amavi from Nice to Aston Villa on an undisclosed fee. Patrick Roberts from Fulham to Man City on an undisclosed fee. Alexandra Mitrovic from Anderlecht to Newcastle for thirty million. And Id- uh, Idrissa Gueye uh, from Lille to Aston Villa. Thank for an you. undisclosed fee. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, there's quite a lot of transfers um, in the last week or so. And I think yeah. I've got to start off with a pun. Class signing from uh, Southampton, really, for Jordi Klasser. Uh, f- f- for me, I think the most interesting and ridiculous signing in some senses, uh, in some ways, is uh, Fabian Dell for AK Snake. <laughs> yeah, he's got a uh, fair bit of abuse for being a bit of a snake. Particularly in there. Villa fans who are burning hit, hit his shirt from last season, which I find quite um, hilarious. Actually, he's certainly not. Well, Man City are bringing in plenty of controversial uh, people in. Um, they're basically they're making. They seem to be good at making uh, the players they bring in the enemies of their previous club. Yeah, um, and it. Uh, obviously Fabian Dolph last week uh, we spoke about him staying at uh, Aston Villa rejecting Manchester City and he even came out and did an interview saying um, he went, he was like looking forward to captain uh, being captain of the Aston Villa side well I've got a quote from that interview uh, he said I'm not leaving I'm staying at the football club and I can't wait for the start of the, se- uh, the season and captaining this great football club yeah and it shows really that money talks louder than anything else in football these days City have obviously you know bowled him over with a big offer and that he couldn't deny and he's gone and he's forgotten that loyalty it's hard obviously to you know come out of an interview like that but obviously you know the offer was too big to to deny and he's going to Man City now uh, guaranteed and I think it's disappointing well he just looks like an idiot really now because he turned down or he said that that quote in the interview and said that he's staying and then he just goes again it's just it's just made made him look like a fool to be honest at yeah, least if he says like that you got to stay then you're just an enemy now he's not only now. lost he's, yeah he's not only lost the respect of people, like fans from Aston Villa but you know he, he's not across I the mean, country it's... really because I thought you know Delft's a, a great player but yeah. That kind of behaviour is just it's not on. If that happened to like in my club I would just like actually hate him really. I think hate's a strong word and you know, you is used too much, but in this occasion I think certainly um you know, certainly yeah. a, a correct well, word to use. He you know, he, he he on you know, in an interview he's he's promised his future to to Aston Villa yeah. and then a few days later, you know, 
Big Off comes along and off he goes. And then uh, even even to uh, City fans, they're going to be, you know, it shows to them, you know, they've got all the money to bring in the players they need. And, you know, he's not going to be playing. Do you think he'll play much at Man City? I don't see him um, that's breaking into the first team too much. Be, it'll be hard, but I guess with Fernando and Fernandinho, they're not the best players. No. So, but I think, I don't know, it... it be interesting to see the mix like Delph and Yaya maybe in the yeah. middle but that might be no, maybe too attacking in some senses you might need a, a stopper uh, especially I mean, against the good teams yeah I mean he was just uh, you know he was breaking through into the England team wasn't he and yeah this is the thing I, that's why I thought you'd never he wouldn't move to Manchester yeah. City just because he's not guaranteed first team football ahead of the Euros Surely it, it would be better to stay at Aston Villa for for this season, get a, get first team football, be captain of your side, and then have you know get a chance. It will be definitely in the squad, um, but he's definitely uh, down. You know his chances being star eleven's definitely decreased with this move. Yeah. But another uh, another signing for Manchester City is uh, Patrick Roberts, who's a uh, V eighteen year old uh, winger from Fulham. For I think he went for eleven million, which is quite ridiculous, to be honest. It's just yeah, it's, silly. <laughs> it's a bit obviously once again shows the amount of money they've got and how determined they are to bring in those you know younger players, those younger English players that they hope will. You know they're obviously they're spending all the money to get those players with the potential, so that they know that they've you know they've got a player that can potentially break into the mm. first team and be a good player for them that's also going to help them meet their um english players quota yeah for the premier league so only free which is for me that is ridiculous like yeah that is this is why england are so you know in a bad state because it surely should be at least seven or five or seven maybe three yeah. is just not enough but back to patrick uh or back to roberts i mean don't know it's don't know him properly to be on first name terms um, he's never played 90 minutes in his professional career and yeah. he only had a breakthrough season um, this season and he did play a bit when Fulham got relegated to the championship two seasons ago but he actually did play against Norwich in, um, in the last game of the season and for 15 minutes he came on he was probably their best player so he did yeah. He did look really good yeah it, sh- yeah, it shows he's got a great potential but you know, st- he's still not a a proven signing is and he not, yeah, not 11 million and that's just yeah ridiculous. all that money absolutely but ridiculous it, it's just you know that really does highlight the the kind of look. it shows how desperate they are as well mm-hmm. the English players you know they, and their mindset is basically snap the best ones up yeah uh, as soon as you possibly can and hopefully you'll get in the best uh, team in a few years time well another another club that has been busy in this transfer window is Sunderland, and they've made two signings uh, this sum, uh, this uh, this week. I mean, uh, yep. one first of all, Eunice Cabool from Spurs to Sunderland. So, what, yeah. what what's, what's your opinion on that? Um, I think that's a good. You know, he's a good solid centre back. I I think for Sunderland, they've. Uh, I don't know. I I can't see him being uh, you know like a stand up player for them, but I think mm-hmm. he's a. He's a, he's a player of good leadership qualities and I think he could sort out a defence that has been lacking for Sunderland and obviously they haven't got Virginia this season no, he's, uh, he's, he's gone, gone out on loan so I think you know he's a he's a he's a quality player I think he's a good he's a good uh, pick up for them for I th- I'm imagining pretty cheap yeah it was I think it's just um, I remember that um when Kabul joined Tottenham a few years ago, this was, and Sunderland were interested in him, and he was, and he said he would never go to Sunderland like ever really. It was something about earthquakes and all that. It was quite a, a strange quote, and it's just it's a quote that players shouldn't make because you never know what, what happens in the yeah. future. Because now he's joined Sunderland. He's probably saying, you know, what a great club this is, great opportunity. But he's he's a liability, I think, Kabul. He was especially the the last season or two for Tottenham, he's been dreadful really. Every, every time I've watched him play, he's he's made a mistake or 
or, or done something that yeah. has not been be- benefited uh, the opposition really. So, I t- <laughs> yeah, it's it's a centre halves. They do struggle something because they got Wes Brown, John O'Shea now Kabul. Um, mm. It's not all and Quetes. Uh, it's not really a solid, you know, backline really. Yeah, they haven't. So there's a lot of players who can make a lot of mistakes and and are definitely getting on a bit, especially Wes Brown and and John O'Shea. I think you know, obviously they've they signed uh, Coates as well. I think I don't know. They I don't think they've got. I think every team needs one defender who's going to be a leader. He's going to be in the first team the entire season he's going to be side all the way through and I don't think they've got that person no. I think they're perhaps hoping Kabul is going to be like that, that kind of leadership yeah. you know have the leadership qualities but I think even he's going to be you know he's not foolproof he's not a foolproof plan I think he's mm-hmm. he's going to inevitably make mistakes and I don't know he needs I don't know Sunderland's defence is certainly lacking yeah it certainly is but um, on the uh, in the opposite um End of a pitch, based on Jeremy Lenz from yeah. Dynamo Kiev, and they they did lack for goals last season. Obviously, they um, signed Defoe on a um, on a transfer in January. Matt didn't really come off, and they got Connor Wickham, Danny Graham. Yeah. I'm probably missing someone out. I think I am, but um, it's not really a, a proven attack, really, uh, apart from. Um, Jermaine Defoe obviously but he's getting on a bit now so Jeremy Lenz he's, he's got a point to prove really I, f- I thought he'd come to England a lot sooner than he has yeah um, 8 million again and it's I think I think he could be really good in the Premier League because he's got all the attributes uh, that, that bodes well really as, as a striker and he can play um, on the left wing so I think and that Sunderland like to play the four three three formation, so he can easily fit in to that yeah. left wing or, or strike him position. So I think it's a it's a canny sign from from Dick, big Dick Hafferkut. So um, yeah, I, th- I, th- I still think Sunderland will struggle. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's not, you know, he's not for eight million. Uh, what is he? Twenty seven, I think. Yeah. You know, it's not um, it's not a cheap sign again, and he's not he's not proven. You know, you said he's got he's got the kind of attributes. League, but I think you never really know until the season starts and Sunderland have splashed the cash you know multiple times in the past and they don't seem to have worked out Sunderland have got surprised me of how much money they're willing to spend on some of their players certainly because you know they, the amount of money they spent on Defoe they wanted mm-hmm. to go in for a big money off of around 14 million uh, back when they wanted to sign Barini. Yeah. so I, I think, think they, they spent yeah, money. I think they have to really because they've been for the last few seasons they've really struggled. They've yeah. been quite lucky to to not get relegated. So clearly the the board has has really give you know, give advocates some some money to spend because they know how important to keep Sunderland in the Premier League because they're a big club. They've got a good stadium, good support. But I just I don't mm. know. I think they'll struggle. I think they really will struggle. They need a a few more defenders and I don't know it's just like Sunderland they just don't interest me like interest me they're quite a boring side to watch yeah and I think like they've well, got a lot of workmen like players in there like Larson Catamol yeah. Bridcart it's not uh, much flair let's be honest so yeah I think perhaps these open lens will kind of bring that sort of you know he'll go he'll be kind of bringing a bit more pace into the squad being going past players, creating more chances. That's what they'll be hoping, bringing them in. But you know, who knows? Anyway, uh, on to one more transfer. I think we got to talk about this. Is it a? I think this is probably a very good signing. Alexandra Mitrovic from Anderlecht to Newcastle for 13 million. Steve McLaren and Mike Ashley. Mike Ashley is spending big money people he means business credit to him to be honest he's not done enough, uh, a lot for Newcastle but he did say in the last game uh, or before the last game against West Ham in an interview with the BBC he said he would spend big this summer and boy he has spent big with Vishnalem Mitrovic and apparently they're in for Mbemba 
from Anderlecht yeah. centre half. So credit to big Mike Ashley. He's he's spending big, and I think Newcastle will be the team to watch. Yeah, I think they're going to be probably. I can't see how they do much worse than last season. You know, they went down to the last day in their you know a relegation battle for them. But I know um, Steve McLaren uh, demanded from his team that they finish in the top eight this uh, season, which. I don't know. I think the the quality of signings, especially in the top half of the table, have been insane. Mm, yeah. So I think it's it's harder than it ever has been. Yeah. Yeah. In in the past to get in in the you know even the top ten position. So it's going to be you know it's going to be a struggle for them. But players like Mitrovic, you know, really quality signing. Yeah. He's done well when he was at Anderlecht, and he's a you know a young player still. And I can see him. Yeah, he's only twenty, so he's got his best years ahead. Yeah. It was a five year deal, so. If, and he's already got praise from uh, Alan Shearer. He was tweeting today about good luck to him, and if he scores goals, he'll get it'll be loved by the fans. So it's always good to get a, a tweet from uh, yeah from Alan Shearer, Newcastle legend, obviously. Anyway, moving on now, we're going to talk about the football league transfers, and there's been a lot. Uh, the busy, the busiest football league club has been Mansfield, who have signed 13 players. Yeah. It's only the 21st of July. They've signed thirteen, but I think they've they've had a massive clear out, and they're just they're just buying players in. And Crawley, are another team who are yeah. clearing out and, and signing. But I think the main chance in the championship, Stuart Downing from West Ham United to Middlesbrough. Michael was like so happy when this was confirmed. He was always telling us that it was going to happen, and I have to I have to admit. I thought it was a bit, a bit bullshit, wasn't it? Come on, why would he go back? Why would he drop down a league? Well, I mean, there was, there was a lot, um, you know, amongst the Middlesbrough fans, there was talk of him going for quite some time, mm. you know. But to me, um, you know, it's one of these rumours, you know, that it can be made up. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's come true. I think it's quite expensive. Um, yeah. Oh, it will rise to seven million if Middlesbrough get promoted. Yeah. And I think he's a he's a good player, but is he? I mean, they're obviously willing to spend that money, uh, but is he going to be the, what they need to get promoted this season? Well, it's like I think Stuart Downing. No one's doubting his quality because no. he is a quality player, but I think it's just his form. It's too inconsistent. Like last season. Um, for the first three months, I'd say, up till November, December time, he was wonderful player. He was on top of his game. He was in the England squad and all that. And then after that, he just flopped, really. He didn't, he didn't play at all well. And then he just, like, I don't know, he just didn't play well at all. So I was surprised because, obviously, Euros, coming, Euros are coming up next season. Surely, if Stuart Downing wants to be in that squad... He would stay at West Ham or at least go to a Premier League club. So yeah. for him, for his sake, I think it's a lack of ambition. Obviously, it's Middlesbrough is his home team club, and he's he's been there before, and he wants yeah. to get his home team club promoted. But surely, in as a footballer, you're wanting your best, like you want to play at the best level, yeah. best tournaments, and all that. And the Euros is the you know one of the best tournaments in the world. Surely Stuart Downing would want to go there, but with this signing to Middlesbrough, he has absolutely no chance in hell. Yeah, and let's not forget, uh, he's obviously he was getting first team football at West Ham. Yeah, it's, you know, it's first team, you know, weekly Premier League football, and he's moved down. You know, he's he's missing that for at least one year, uh, yeah. whether they get promoted or not. Yeah, it'll be interesting. If they don't get promoted, then what's he going to do? He's going to stay there, and he's he's just like, I wouldn't say wasted because I think that's a bit harsh. Yeah, but. He's just like I think he can do. No disrespect to Middlesbrough, I'll now probably get a lot of hate from Michael saying this. He can do a lot better than Middlesbrough. Yeah. I think he should have gone. He should have stayed at West Ham. Europa League football, like European football. Surely you, you can't turn that down, can you? Like I, I just don't get it. If you know, I just can't get in Stuart Downing's head right now. Him going from Europa, uh, he can play Euro- European football to the Championship. It just doesn't doesn't work, does it? It's like two plus two equals five. That doesn't work because it's wrong. I I just don't get it. But I guess that's 
that's my point of view. Tom, do you? What do you think? Do you agree or? Yeah, I agree. Or am you I know, a bit, bit harsh? No, I don't think you're, you're being harsh. <laughs> no, two plus two is is not five. It's all right. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, I can see where you come from. It, you know, it makes sense. Another transfer from a football league, uh, particularly the Championship. Ross Turnbull from Barnsley to Leeds. Leeds now have a Champions League winner um, in their squad, which not many uh, Championship clubs can uh, can say. No. I think Turnbull's a decent little keeper. It's not too shabby. I think. Don't know what about uh, Silvestri, the Italian geezer. He's probably buggered off with uh, actually, you know. Um, Middlesbrough have done a lot, haven't they? <laughs> Marin again, they've got Callas from uh, Chelsea to Middlesbrough on loan. Yep. He was a right back. Uh, he played in the se- uh, semi final and playoff. Then he had to, he had to go back to um, Chelsea for some for some reason. I don't know why he didn't stay for for the final. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe that would have helped Middlesbrough out, but who knows? One more transfer: Will Grigg from Brentford to Wigan. He actually toured up League One last season with uh, MK Dons whilst he was on loan from Brentford. 20 goals and 44 appearances. So this is a you know a great signing for Wigan. And they're building a very strong squad to to win League One, which I, I think they will, let's be honest. Which would be, you know, it'd be always nice for a club like Wigan to win some silverware. It's not, obviously they won the FA Cup in 2013. Yeah. So uh, yeah, not too bad. Not too shabby at all. Anyway, let's go abroad now and let's go to Spain. Let's get some sun, Tom. Even it's pretty nice here in England. Yeah, not too bad. Not it's too bad, but it's like quite... occasionally. But we're doing all right. Yeah, it's quite it's quite nice uh, in Spain at the moment. Wouldn't mind uh, a little holiday. We've seen. Uh, we mentioned uh, earlier on uh, Santiago Vigini. He moved from Sunderland to Getafe on the loan. Uh, I think it's a season long loan which will be uh, I mean he he didn't have his best oh that that own goal against uh, Southampton yeah. that, that own goal. goal will be forever remembered <laughs> that, I is, that was one of the best career. finds ever he was uh, well especially on social media people suggesting he would be a good striker for Sunderland uh, but we've seen uh, you know he, he hasn't had his best days there and I guess they're hoping loan will either trigger a move away or just and may perhaps you know playing for Getafe in the BBVA might improve uh, the player that he is right now yeah I think he suits a continental style of yeah. South American and he'll, he'll enjoy life in Spain yeah absolutely. and yeah I remember Getafe ha- used to have a Burger King as their sponsor I like that that, that was back in the day but I thought that would be a a pointless factor to tell but uh, Kiko Casilla from Espanyol obviously rivals of Barcelona to yep. Real Madrid for 8 million there's quite a lot of hate for this signing um, obviously coming from basically Barcelona let's be honest um, yeah so there's a lot of um, flags around Real Madrid when they signed him and it seems that they might well. not go in for David De Gea but uh, well, there were um, some reports that suggested that they were going to wait it out until his contract had expired, um, as that was a possibility um, that, that he they might leave it until uh, the end of this season, uh, when they're going to try and get him uh, well on a free, uh, so they only have to pay the compensation fee. Didn't um, I'm pre- I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think they didn't. I think Kiko Castillo's owned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they had a ba- uh, buyback had, clause. Yeah, fifty percent. They still own like fifty uh, percent of the player. Immobile went from Dortmund to Sevilla um, on a loan. He didn't have a great time at, at Dortmund. Uh, I think when he first moved, there was a bit of hype around him. You know, saying he could be a fantastic striker, but he's gone to Sevilla um, on a loan that, uh, as I understand it, it's got a future fee attached to it. Um, should Sevilla want to make na- uh, next that at the end of the season but uh, that's just another one that happened in Spain sweet meat <laughs> now we're going to go from Spanish transfers to 
Rumours, for transfer rumours are now alive and kicking. And I think we've got to start with, hmm, let's say, Christian Benteke. Boom. Well, Liverpool. Um, it's got a, so far it's got a mixed reception, isn't it, from Liverpool fans? Yeah, I think due to the amount of money, which is yeah. £32.5 million pounds release clause. And I think after after we've seen, you know, players like Lambert and... And Benteke, uh, sorry, Lambert and Balotelli, you know, they didn't exactly flourish at the season here. And, you know, I think people were just making, people were making the kind of link that Benteke is also kind of a, a big, strong player who wants the ball played to his feet. But I think, I think Benteke can offer more than Balotelli and Lambert mm-hmm. could. I mean, yeah. Lambert, Lambert had a bit of a problem with match fitness mm-hmm. uh, throughout the seasons. So I think that's why he didn't play too many games. But, um, I mean, yeah, I agree. It's expensive signing, but I think I think he he will definitely do better than Balotelli. Oh yeah, you know, he's he's in the league now for a number of years, and I think you know he'll he'll understand what he's up against and what he has to do to to succeed. So I'm not, I don't know. I think there are other transfers that we could have gone for that I think would have been met with a slightly better reception. But at the end of the day, I think it could be a good move, and I'd like to see him. You know, I think he'll do. I think he'll do well. I don't think he'll be do as well as, you know, Suarez ever did. But who, you know, there's not many players we could sign that would. So hmm. yeah, I think overall he's a good sign. Well, he scored 13 goals for Aston Villa last season, and yeah. and he was injured for for about two or three months of the season. So he's he's a proven goal scorer in the Premier League level. I don't get Liverpool fans that saying it's a dreadful signing. Just yes, because of the money quite a yeah. lot but you just sold Raheem Sterling for 49 million so yeah. Brendan Rodgers can spend you know a few a few pounds and, and he has I just or he will I, I presume well Sherwood Sherwood was determined to keep him yeah, but so I think the only way we were going to get him is by meeting that release clause so yeah. that was the only possible way we were going to get Ben Teke at all but, but yeah he's, he's a proven goal scorer he'll get you about 15-20 yeah. goals that's you know um Liverpool's top goal scorer last season was Raheem Sterling with yeah. only 11 so I think Liverpool fans would definitely take a, a strike at getting 15-20 goals and yeah. obviously Sturridge will be back well Sturridge uh, I think he's still going to miss the mm-hmm. very beginning of yeah, the season but uh, he'll, come, he'll come back and then injury, you know, Sturridge and Benteke up top and yeah. you get you know, defences are going to struggle against that kind of um, movement and yeah they're both strength. quick players quick strong players and I think you know Sturridge obviously has done extremely well at the club and I think perhaps uh, Benteke probably meets you know he's more similar to Sturridge than he is to a player like Balotelli or Lambert so I can see him doing really well to be honest mm-hmm. well on to oh, from from one Liverpool well maybe one Liverpool striker to another Ricky Lambert is a guy who wants out? Uh, it seems that he didn't get much game time. Must be honest, last season and yeah, a host and of clubs are that can only really decrease, isn't it? Mm. That game time. Yeah, that's the thing. And a host of clubs are in for him. Um, currently, I think West Brom, Norwich, Bournemouth, Brom. Um, even Middlesbrough. Again, talking about them, um, are in for him. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I think Ricky Lambert would definitely move in this window. West Brom currently are the bookies favourites, but some yeah. some newspapers are saying Norwich are favourites, so it'll probably go either way. But I wouldn't be too too upset if he if he signed for Norwich. Really, he's a proven goal scorer, isn't he? Yeah. Just because he didn't do very well. Well, uh, I mean, last season, season before, yeah, season before he joined us, you know, at Southampton, he had a fantastic season, and you know, he's. You know, play, if when he's playing on a regular basis, I think he could be a fantastic mm. striker for for any club in the Premier League. Yeah. So, oh, he got it in the England squad for the World Cup, so he can't be yeah. that bad. From uh, one side of Merseyside to another, yeah. Uh, John Stones from Everton. Apparently, they rejected a twenty million bid from Chelsea last week, and the. the uh, London club are prepared to bid up to 26 million, which is cur- currently not going to be enough because Everton have put a 30 plus uh, million price tag on it on the young English defender. I think it must be interesting. Obviously, um, 
Everton were linked with uh, Johnny Evans coming in for about around about eight million. Yeah. So it kind of like makes sense if if John Stones did go, then they've got a replacement straight away. But I think John Stones would be a replacement for John Terry in the next, not this season, but the the next season I think, and it'll be be Stones and Zuma probably, which wouldn't yeah, be a, well, a bad backline. It shows again. Uh, it shows again that there's you know that price tag is being put upon you know, young English players, you know, and I think you know Chelsea are going to have to pay that that price tag of thirty million that, that Everton have put on Stones, but you know it's not too. Well, yeah. it's yeah, it's correct. Jose Mourinho, I ask, you know, oh, it's Jose, obviously, but it's just, Chelsea just wants to improve their squad. He, every summer, he's always on improving the squad, and, and credit to, to Jose, really, cause he never stops working, and yeah, Chelsea are going to be, obviously, uh, dangerous, and then, uh, but another Chelsea defender that, that is, uh, could be on his way out is uh, Felipe Luis his stay in London did not last long at all only a no. season uh, he'll, I think reports are saying he's going back to Atletico Madrid for about 15 million and obviously Chelsea signed him for 58.8 million so 800,000 uh, loss which isn't too bad I guess he's won the Premier League he can go home to Spain and yeah play football why not Yeah. but I think the main uh, transfer rumour could be uh, David De Gea. It's a it's a weird one, isn't it, Tom? It's, it's a yeah. saga now. It's officially a saga. Well, I can't at this point in time. I can't see him moving this season. Uh, I think we've seen you know uh, Real Madrid snap up Kiko Casilla, um, and I think it, it shows that they're in no hurry to to dive in and get De Gea. Um, from De Gea's point of view, you would want to eventually leave especially for a club like Real Madrid but uh, it'd be interesting to see if he manages to keep uh, in this fantastic form that he was in last season you know he's you know a world class keeper and if he keeps that up then you know there's going to be no end of the interest um, I think next season when his contract expires it's going to be hard for United to oh, yeah. to keep them at the club and Don't, oh, that would be devastated if, they, if David De Gea left on a free that would be just I don't know that would be amazing but I wouldn't be surprised because he's not going to accept a new contract there's no way no nah. so I don't know it'd, it'd be strange we'll see what happens I guess you never know it could the situation could easily change in the next month um, yeah. Rafa might need you know might say I want to hire Ben Perez will get his man like he normally does on um Another Manchester United keeper that is looks to be on his way out is Victor Valdez. He's only been at the club for for six months, but he's on his way out because uh, I think Louis Van Gaal said he wouldn't, he didn't want to play for the reserve team, even though he played three times for the under twenty ones in, in last season. So maybe some. Uh, Chats behind closed doors didn't go too well. Valdez wasn't happy, and and Vahal just spouts it out in the media. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, Van Hal obviously isn't particularly happy at the club, and you know, but and there's in this kind of scenario, there's always going to be people and reports of him of multiple clubs, but. I don't know. I, I can see him staying for another season. One last transfer rumor, or one last rumor in this section, and it's Patrick Bamford. Um, he's been wanted by many clubs, from Crystal Palace to Middlesbrough, and it looks yeah. like Alan Pardew, Pards for sure, has got his man. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he had a good season at Middlesbrough. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, scored a lot of goals, but obviously, Crystal Palace. You know, they don't have a strike here. It's, consistent all the way for a season you know Dwight Gale hasn't been uh, particularly consistent when he's played uh, and he hasn't played that much to be honest mm-hmm. um, Glenn Murray had a good end to the season uh, but you know he's not going to be someone 
you know, who's going to be playing every game, and uh, they'd be hoping that Bamford can bring those performances that came about in the Championship to the Premier League, and he can do them well. Yeah, he deserves his chance to get yeah. in, the, in the Premier League, Bamford, because he was so good. He slowly built his way up. He was playing in League One two years ago, then Championship with Middlesbrough, and now, and now the Premier League with with Crystal Palace, it seems. And I've, obviously, uh, I think Mr. Middlesbrough were very interested. Karanka really wanted him back, but Jose Mourinho was like, Let's, you know, we need to test him in the, uh, in the Premier League. So Palace got their first, uh, you know, the location, London, clearly yeah. likes it there, suits him. You know, it's a good place to play football, really, and it'd be interesting to see him, uh, see him against Norwich in the first, first game of the season if he does join Palace, because... Yeah, he was in the song's pocket for most well, of from, the uh, from uh, that's true. But um, <laughs> from from Chelsea's point of view, it's a good loan as well. You yeah. know, Premier League, they get to see how he plays. You mm. know, for you know, a side that you know, bringing a player like uh, Johan Kabay, you know, that's a good player for Bamford to be playing training alongside uh, with. So I think you know, it will really give Chelsea an idea of you know. How good would he be uh, potentially for a future Chelsea squad? Um, and Bamford will be really, you know, I think he'll relish this opportunity. And I'm hoping he does really well because, you know, Palace could do with the players, you know, scoring goals week in, week out. Because the, the goals kind of spread out for Palace last season. So someone like Bamford could really help them out. Yeah, it's but he's only got one year left of his of his Chelsea um, contract. So if he does impress with Crystal Palace, then I presume Chelsea will give him a, a new deal. But I don't know. It'd be, it'd be interesting if uh, he does stay at Palace, uh, stay at Chelsea in the future, because obviously it will be tough to get in at the moment. But you never know what's round the corner, really. That's the joy of football, I guess. You never know what's coming. All right, we're going to move on uh, to the hot topics. Uh, this is a segment in the podcast where we don't necessarily talk about uh, a transfer or rumour, uh, just any news that's been going on in the footballing world in the last week. Uh, and we're going to start off with Arsene Wenger um, commenting on the fact that he doesn't want to sell any of his best players anymore. Um, really showing his intent. You know, they want to push for a, a BPL title this season you know and Chelsea uh, sorry Arsenal fans have been kind of plagued with the fact that you know they've had to repay debts for the uh, the Emirates mm. and now finally you know they've got the money they don't have to sell their best players to stay afloat and you know keep the keep uh, on top of the debts so it shows that now they can finally I think give a, a realistic push for the Premier League and the players that they're bringing in you know Pedersek I think they can really give it a go this season and give Chelsea yeah, a run for their money. Challenge, yeah. I think it's it's how you run a football club. Obviously, they moved to to the Emirates. That cost a lot of money. Yep. But then they slowly or oh, they sold sold some players. They didn't spend too much, but now they've um, they're in green for for figures, they're in positive profit and all that. But now they're spending, you know, Meza Ozil two summers ago, Alexis Sanchez last summer, this season Petr Cech. And I presume, and I assume that Arson uh, Wenger will be bringing in uh, a couple more players. Not yeah. too many, I think, because their squad's pretty darn good. Their midfield is just scary as. Uh, they're still lacking a uh, defensive midfielder. Probably yeah. one striker. Um, well, apart from that, they're, they're uh, I I kind of I think I disagree with the the reports that they need a striker. I mean, yeah, that you know it would, certainly wouldn't harm their chances, but you know I don't think it's an absolute necessity for them right now. Uh, you know I think they've got you know Walcott who seems you know in, you know only preseason friendlies, but you know the season before and the preseason friendlies he's uh, you know, he's performed well in that striker role, and it's obviously something they're looking to you know for him to play in now on a on a full time basis. So I think you know if he manages to keep his form in the in that striker role, then you know I can see Arsenal pushing on for a title challenge uh, without signing a striker. Yeah, but I think it's 
it's all about injuries for Theo Walcott. He get he gets injured too much. Yeah, and it would be a risk for for Wenger but to rely on Walcott and, and Giroud for being yeah, it would be and well back obviously. It wouldn't be an absolute. I don't think it would be an absolute. You know, travesty if they didn't manage to. You know, sign the striker this season. I think they'd do okay regardless. Oh yeah, if they sign or not. Think, but I think they would. They would love a striker. Like, obviously they're not going to sign it. But, oh, they might sign him, but I doubt it. But maybe like a Benzema or someone, someone like that. That would be just, just a mad signing, really. And I think that would just boost their chances of winning the Premier League greatly. But I think they'll be, they'll be up there. They're always up there, huh? but. I think they they'll be close to the to the league title, for, for, you know, since since a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago, probably three years. But uh, we'll move on. Um, Sheffield Wednesday uh, in the Championship. Uh, they've made a whole bunch of signings, uh, including Lewis McGugan, Lewis Price, Jack Hunt, uh, Vincent Sasso, uh, Ross Wallace, Alex Lopez, and Marco Matias. Uh, as they're spending a lot of money, you know, hoping that either this season or in the near future they're going to be able to make their way into the Premier League. It's a lot of money and a lot of players. And I think they've got new owners who uh, like to spend a bit of dollar dollar, and their home pr- prices or home ticket prices, I think it's fifty two quid. Um, so they clearly know how to <laughs> overcharge fans. I think Bristol City have to pay. 39 quid to go there uh, for a ticket yeah. um, which is a lot of money uh, it isn't good for the game uh, obviously um, with ticket prices inflating it's, it's, it's definitely not good but it's a, it's a way to get income for the clubs and they always want to make as much money but on to the signings really I think they've signed um, championship proven players like McGoog and yeah. Jack Hunt's a good right back uh, Lewis Price, good backup keeper uh, for um, Kieran Westwood. He's so good, Kieran Westwood. He's probably the best keeper in the championship. And Ross Wallace, he's got promoted twice with Burnley. So they've got they've got experienced players in there who who've done it before. So I think yeah. I think yeah I think Sheffield Wednesday clearly they've got their ambitions set very high. Maybe Osmatics is a bit too much. Um, at the moment, but playoffs is is reasonable. It's it's again an open league. A lot of teams could surprise you. Come on, but a season ago we wouldn't say Bournemouth was gonna were gonna win the championship. Let's be honest, no one predicted that. It's which in the playoffs, no one predicted that too. Uh, even Brentford, come on, uh, and Middlesbrough, they they were always going to be uh, outsiders, but they did have a chance to get playoffs. So, um. So it's an open league. It's a, one of the best leagues in the world. Just entertainment values, and it, it's you know it's great to watch. Really, I really do like watching the championship, uh, particularly when your team isn't in there. Because when your team is in there, it's just fucking nah. It's, it's too intense for me. But yeah, Trevor Wednesday, they'll be uh, they'll be up there. Uh, wouldn't be maybe Dark Horse, maybe Bolton. Bolton and Trevor Wednesday are the teams to watch. But with me saying that, they'll probably do really bad and they'll probably sack their manager within the first three months. And that concludes this week's episode of Switcher Play. Thank you guys for, for listening and watching. Kind of, YouTube is kind of watching. Even there's not much, like, action Stop on rambling. the screen. There's... Stop rambling! Nah, I will. I'll do what I want. I'm the anchor. Uh, pictures and all that shit. Um, but before we go, we have to say... You have to check out our Twitch TV channel, which is Switch Your Play Podcast, isn't it, Tom? It is. Thank you. Sweet. And our Twitter is at Switch Your Play YT for YouTube, if you don't get that. Anyway, uh, be sure to subscribe. I think we're 45 subscribers, so if we can get to 50 by the end of this, this week's episode, we will be a happy bunch of people. Be sure to like this video comment down below just put any crap they're not like not spammy crap but good good crap like football related stuff always, that's why we're doing it with football related podcast uh michael will be back next week 
yeah. on calm, the podcast. Calm, However, we... Calm is staying in in Turkey for another. Is it Turkey? Um, let's just say abroad. Yeah, I'm going to say Turkey. I'm going to stick my neck out. And yeah. Calm is in Turkey still, so it will be me, Michael, and Tom. Uh, yeah, three amigos. Um, but again, I'll be anchor probably. We'll decide. Depends how well uh, this episode does. We'll, we'll spread it out. But one more thing, one important thing. We have a fancy football league on the official Barclays Premier League fancy football page. Uh, so the the code, the link, uh, the league code, will be down in the description below. So be sure to click on that. And I think we've like we've got about ten people at the moment. So we want to. Uh. We're in a league of about 25, 50 people, and there will be a special prize at the end of the season, whoever wins it. So that's quite special. Uh, we haven't decided what prize it is, but we will decide closer to the time. And my team, name, my team name is Cool Runnings, so if you get the pun, that's good. Um, <laughs> Tom hates it, don't you? You really do hate it. I, cool I do runnings. not mind the... I, don't, I think it was Michael that didn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> Because he never watched Cool Runnings, which is a disgrace to human beings. Anyway, I think we're rambling in too much now. Yeah. So, Tom, thank you for being on this episode with me. It's been it's been good. It's been uh, special, to say the least. It's just you know, two of us. It's been a uh, tough been, and part. It's been good, actually. It's been it's a good been, little episode. Yeah, it, it was definitely different, just having two people on. Yeah. So, but obviously we're back to three, and then back to four, and other week. Anyway... Say goodbye, Tom. Goodbye. That's a goodbye from me. No disrespect to any other people on this podcast. Yeah. Best episode so far. Just saying. <laughs> That was sick.